Hello there folks, these are the hands of me Dan Brown from AsortOfInterestInLife.com and today we're going to have a closer look at this absolutely lovely dip pen set. This is the Manuscript Victoriana box set. If we pop this open, you'll see just, ah, oh, it's just absolutely fantastic. i just hold that up to the camera there, hopefully get as much in focus as I can. And you can see, obviously, we have got all of this incredible array of nibs here, starting from very thick there and working slowly down to a very thin one. And I'd say probably the ones that I've been writing with uh, most. So it's been a long time since I've tried to do any proper calligraphy, so I'm just getting back into it, so please forgive me when I give you this next demonstration. Um, I really like the thin one because it's got a real flex to it and you can really put the pressure down to give you a nice sort of thick line. And I'd say it's sort of those size that I quite like. I'm trying to do sort of classic goth gothic scripts and that sort of thing. So first of all, I'll show you the very thin nib there. Hopefully the audio recording is going to be all right here. We pop out that. And pop out the little reservoir. Now... First things first, I will pop the nib, if I can try and fetch this into focus for you. It's very difficult to try and get the lighting conditions right on board when it's a dark day, so I do apologise. So you can see we've got a very thin nib there, and it's just a case then of taking the pen holder and sliding that up. You can see there that's nice and solidly locked in place now. And then we pop the reservoir part up here. We flip that around so you can see the back. It's then just a case of hopefully, this is difficult to do and film. You literally just slide that up onto the back there, and then that, when we dip it into our ink bottle, some lovely Parker Quink there. Um, that will store a little bit more ink and mean that we don't have to keep dipping in every two seconds, hopefully at least. Right, we'll have a quick look at the thin nib first of all, but that's your simple overview of how it all fits together. So this is going to be as simple as dipping a pen in some ink. And the trick is not to get too much on it so it all spills out everywhere. But definitely always have a bit of kitchen roll, something like that on hand. And now it's going to be quite simply just start writing, drawing lines, whatever you want to do. And what I like about this one, like I say, is because it's a very thin nib, it's got a lot of flex in it. So we can do some very, very thin lines if we just press very lightly. But also, if we start to press a lot harder, you can see just how much difference there is. Based on the amount of pressure and the amount of ink that will put out, I mean... That thick line there, if I do a, a couple of thin ones now, you can see they're practically... Well, you would think that they were from a different nib if it was a standard pen. And that's something that I really like about this, because it really does allow you to sort of focus the emphasis and thicken lines and just sort of play around. Because I'm only just getting back into calligraphy, it's been quite nice to have these sort of options. So you can do different thicknesses of lines and all that sort of stuff on the same pen. And, well, like I say, it's just something nice to play around at this stage. But hopefully, if you stay with my videos, you will see me start to actually get a mastery of some basic skill. Um, but who knows, that could be a long time in the future. So here you can see we've got a much wider nib. If I fetch this around, hopefully... So you can see there instantly just how thick that line is. So this obviously starts to make things like classic gothic fonts a lot more of a realistic sort of, I don't know, option for somebody who's got a little bit more skill than myself. As you can see, I aborted that attempt at trying to write a little D. But you can see the basic principle here, <laughs> that it's it's suddenly an awful lot easier to be able to try and do the thin parts, the thick parts, and give the sort of classic cal calligraphic stylings, whatever the term may be. You know, it's strange how there's some letters that I just like. For example, the classic manuscript T. I'm not sure what it is. I mean, that's a terrible example of it. 
absolutely appalling example. <laughs> but I just really enjoy sort of these sweeping flourishes that are added to letters. Now, the key with calligraphy, really, and certainly fonts like this, is that you would have um, either the skill to do them offhand perfectly, or I would have a little set of guidelines so that all of the lines would be perfectly straight. And that's what starts to make things look like they should be. And that perfect sort of uniformity that really makes classic Gothic writing look just how it should. I mean, for example, if I fetch that down, that's still not a great example. But you can see instantly the fact that it just has all the lines parallel makes it look a lot better. But as I say, these are all just uh, my first steps back into the world of calligraphy. So please do not judge me too much on these. So I suppose at this point I should say thank you very much for watching. Um, please check out my other videos for a load more sort of fancy writing bits and pieces like this. Uh, stay tuned because like I say I'm going to be practicing a lot over the next months and hopefully uploading a few videos as I get a little bit better at this sort of thing. And until the next time really, subscribe, like the Facebook page, check out all my other videos for a load more random stuff. I live on a little narrow boat, so there's certainly a lot of outdoorsy general things about boat life. And really, have a fantastic day. Oh, feel free to also buy my books about living on a narrow boat as well. <laughs> right, after that shameless plug, farewell, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around soon.